I really want to ask you about mm -hmm. uh, intelligence. What we know about yeah. the intelligence of, let's say, T Rex. We talked about his big head. What do we know about? No, not much. So there's there's a T Rex brain, or at least a very rough cast of part of one. That's the actual look of. Yeah, that this is. So dinosaurs, in fact, most reptiles. I wonder if you can see it on the Velociraptor. Not really, unfortunately. Um, it's elongated. Yeah, but it, it's more that they have. We, we are weird in that we have a brain that basically fills the inside of our skull. What most animals have is actually a little kind of sub-skull inside the main skull, which is called the endocast, or endocranium. And the brain is in that. Um, and even then, it's not like full of brain because we've packed an awful lot of brain into our limited space, and they then have quite a lot of goo and fat and other stuff around it. Um, but it means for dinosaurs, and then deep reptiles and birds in general, in the old days, you could basically cut one open, but now we'll CT scan through them. You can take an internal mold of the endocranium, the brain case, and then whatever filled that would have been the brain and its surrounding tissues. And that's how you get something like this. In this case, someone literally cracked open an old skull and basically took an internal mold in the same way that you do an external mold for the, for the skulls. And that tells you quite a lot about certain things. Um, so for example, you've got a bulb at the front, which is the olfactory bulb. So brains are very stereotyped. Again, ours are super weird. So you have your olfactory bulb at the front, and behind that you have the optic bulb or the optic lobe. So roughly how big they are will tell you roughly how much of the brain is devoted to, for example, sight and smell. So if it's a lot, it's pretty good. If there's not much, it's not very good. That goes quite a long way already. Um, one thing we've done in the last few years is you can also get into the, it's not shown here, I wouldn't be part of this, uh, but the inner ear. We can CT scan into the structure of the bony inner ear. And from that, you can actually get an idea of what frequency of sounds the inner ear was structured wow. to be pitched to. Wow. Which is doesn't actually tell you very much, but it's phenomenally cool that you can do it. We should say you also have quite a bit of a background in biology. So you're trying to reconstruct biology from, go from paleontology to biology. Yeah, I, my, my go-to one liner is I'm a zoologist, but I work on dead stuff. My degree was zoology. I, my official job title now is reader of zoology. I teach zoology. I don't teach paleo. Um, so yeah, living animals was always actually my primary interest. And I kind of fell into paleo, but then I wanted to drag that with me because I'd been trained in behavior and ecology and it's what I was most interested in. So then applying that knowledge and understanding to these animals. So to some degree, it is possible to reach towards the biology? Absolutely, yeah. So with the ear, that's interesting, the brain. Yeah. So we can know something about the brain. Yeah, uh, but then but then when you get into intelligence is when it gets really awkward because working out exactly which bits of this are probably linked to like the main fundamental processing and what you link to actual intelligence is tough. Um, on top of that, we don't really know what's been the big challenge of the last couple of years of this question was T-Rex and other dinosaurs super intelligent of like neurone density. How many basically nerve cells can you pack in per bit or volume? Because birds have some weird tricks, which means they get a lot more brain per volume. Um, just how much of the brain case was brain and how much was like goop around it, we know varies. So you get a kind of fairly big upper and lower band. And then the other big thing we always have to do is factor in size. Big animals need bigger brains to operate them. So whales have really big brains, but whales weigh tens of tons. They're not smarter than us. So you have the the classic thing is a thing called the um, encephalization quotient, which is at a very simple level, it is the volume of brain scaled against the size of the animal. So we have huge brains compared to how big we are. So we're massively up the chart. And then you do have a few things with like worms. I should probably stick to vertebrates. But some stupid stuff which has a surprisingly small brain for its size. Most things that aren't primates and things like crows and parrots sit very neatly on a couple of different curves. There's a curve for reptiles, a curve for birds, a curve for mammals, and things like this. Um, and basically that's it. But also actually our understanding with mass estimates for dinosaurs is good but not great. And so you could easily be out by, you could easily be out by like 20 or 30% of 
on the volume of the brain inside the brain case, and then you could be out by 20 or 30% on your mass estimate. Well, now suddenly, <laughs> it's very easy to make the brain too big and the animal too light, and it's super smart, or make the brain too small and the animal too heavy, and it's super dumb. So um, that's awkward, unfortunately. So apparently there's uh, some controversial paper that suggests that T-Rex is, uh, pri has primate level intelligence. Yeah, and then that was shot down within a few months by a team of paleontologists and a couple of other neurologists who really went to town on it. Just counting the number of, try, try, yeah, trying it, to it, estimate it, the number of neurons. Yeah, it was the neuron density thing. And yeah, I... I, I unsurprisingly support the revised one, which was done by a whole bunch. Yeah, the Caspar paper. Um, I've spoken to Caspar about it, a couple of the other authors. So they uh, scaled down the number of neurons from 3 billion down to 250 million to 1.7 yeah, billion, much, much which is similar to crocodiles. Not primate. Yeah, which is kind of what you'd expect. I mean, a couple of other people at various times have suggested they're really smart. And again, you know, birds have this thing of, they have this weird thing of neuron folding and they can basically pack in a lot more than you'd expect. You know, that's why crows are that smart despite having tiny brains, relatively even compared to their overall size. Um, but uh, I'm del being obviously overly facetious, but if ultimately part of your scaling is how big is the animal versus how big is its brain, that's most of a T-Rex brain. It's a fraction of the size of a chimp brain and chimps don't weigh seven tons. So, you, you, you know, it's a kind of Hitchens like extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. But, like, you just look at it and go, that's about the proportion we'd expect for a croc. Now, crocs are smarter than people think, but they're sure as hell not monkeys. Um, you're going to have to really come up with something much more convincing than, oh, well, if you just pack them and if you scale them this way. A uh, bit of a ridiculous question, but is it possible to find evidence of tool use? I mean, in theory, it, it depends how you, quite how you define a tool. So birds building nests is arguably tool use to a certain degree. Sure, yeah. I'm aware of, I, su I suspect it's turned out not to be the case. I was, I was shown a very rough, not very well prepared fossil 20 years ago now, no, 15 years ago now where someone said, we think this might be an early bird nest and therefore potentially even a dinosaur nest and nothing's ever been published. So my guess is once they excavated it and had a good look at it, they went, nah, it's nothing really. I mean, I guess the question is, how would you know? Yeah, if it would be difficult unless it's obvious widespread primate like Yeah, but like even then, like, you know, sapien -like chim you know chimp chimps make loads of tools, but it's mostly made of wood and they're mostly just breaking stuff. And then that's the odds of that preserving are very low you do get things like chimps and otters sea otters you know, they have their favorite anvil and hammer stones to break stuff open but again the reason they picked that stone is because it's really heavy and good at breaking oysters or breaking nuts it's not going to leave or probably not going to leave stereotypical points on the rock and even then you could just go well maybe it you know just got bashed up in a river or something 